Joining us now on M&A TV is Sheila Smith, consultant at Deloitte and a leading authority in the restructuring marketplace. Sheila, such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about specifically what you do with Deloitte. Uh, what I have done, and I have recently retired, is that I ran the restructuring practice initially for the U.S. and then ultimately for the Western Hemisphere, which would have been all of North and South America, including the Cayman Islands. Let's talk a little bit about the positioning of firms and the professionals themselves. What evolution you have seen over the last several years? And that's a very good question because 20, 25 years ago when I started in the business, trouble was generic. You didn't necessarily need to have deep industry expertise to be able to uh, be in that field. Uh, nowadays, what we're seeing is that you really need to have a case on point to get the next case on point, and that jurisprudence is also following one case after the other. So let's take coal. If you were in the Patriot Coal case and all of the decisions that evolved from that case, then when you got to the next case, Arch and Walter Energy and all the coal companies which have subsequently gone bankrupt, uh, if you were in the first case, and you follow the jurisprudence, it was much easier to get the next case. So my thoughts in terms of professional firms and professionals is that you really need to focus on the industry verticals that are either now in trouble or that you anticipate that will be in trouble. Uh, I earlier today spoke about healthcare is gonna continue to be a problematic industry vertical, both because of the Balanced Budget Act, Obamacare, the aging of America, a cacophony of, of different uh, variables that are going to create further degradation in healthcare. Higher education has been one that everyone's talking about, and there's been a lot of degradation in the higher education vertical. Obviously, oil, gas, coal, all of those kind of dirty industries are, are having problems also. So if when I was at Deloitte, fortuitously, we would have industry experts in every uh, sector that we could roll out for the original pitch and they would participate as and when needed. Uh, but now when you go to the pitches, they say, how many X cases have you done? And absent that, you probably are not going to get an interview. What about retail? Well, retail is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> And there is always just a movement in, in retail, uh, things that are in vogue and things that are not in vogue. You know, when you're selling umbrellas in Palm Beach, you know, that might not be the right uh, vertical. Uh, so I think retail continues to erode. Uh, and you have these big boxes that we can all name, I won't, uh, that we keep waiting uh, that they're going to either file or go through some kind of a restructuring. Chapter 11 filings, of course, steadily trended down since we emerged from the recession. What do you foresee for 2016 going into 2017? Do you think that the trend is going to continue that way or does it depend on several factors including interest rates? What do you think for the future? Well, we hope and pray that the economy gets a little rocky, uh, <laughs> but we definitely see some signs. You have a lot of uh, what we would call black swan events, whether it's the Russian-Ukraine debacle, the Chinese and Japanese fighting over the island, ISIS, uh, so a lot of events there that we call black swan events. Uh, you know, the Fed yesterday on its position with respect to interest rates. Uh, Dr. Altman calling for higher default rates in a very heated up high leverage market that just one or two percent of that huge market creates opportunities. I think the middle market's going to pick up a little bit more. Uh, the big cases probably have and been done, uh, but there will be more middle market activity. So I, I do believe that the next year or two, we're going to see more activity. And if you look out over, let's say, a 100-year cycle, every seven to nine years, there's a downturn. It's, you know, the economy goes up, the economy goes down. Um, and so we're about seven and a half, eight years out from the last downturn. You've been in the business for a very, very long time. You're highly respected. What do you know now that you wish that you knew then when you were first starting out advising people and consulting with people? What have you learned along the way, the one golden rule? Well, the one golden rule is that um, how to say no with a yes voice is that you're often put in the position of no, 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 but you need to, to uh, couch that in a way that whatever the party is that you're dealing with, really see some of the angst that you might be having about the loss of jobs, the fact that they're going to get paid less than 100 cents on the dollar. So you really need to, um, and I think women are very well suited to do this, mm -hmm. is that how to say, no, you're not going to get paid, but with a yes tone. You have to be delicate and diplomatic, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Sheila, it has been wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on m and TV. You're welcome. Thank you.